did develop a tour where at night I would give a uh, make a few stops and take people on a, a, a haunted tour of San Antonio, which I just thought would be an interesting entertainment, and I still do that periodically. The Northeast Independent School District always sponsors several of my tours. I've done them in both the spring and fall, and they're reasonable, and you just get on a coach that I've chartered, and we take you to see some of the more haunted places. Sometimes we get out and go inside and see these places and hear the stories as told by their owners or the people who perhaps work in the building, such as the Minger Hotel. Mr. Malakara, who is the public relations director, often loves to go around and tell stories. He knew that I, he is a personal friend and has been for years, and he helped me write the book called The History and Mystery of the Minger Hotel. He had so many wonderful stories to tell about his 30 years at the Minger. I said, Ernest, why don't you just give me these stories, write them in your own words, and we will have an entire chapter called Down Memory Lane with Ernest Malacara, and let them be your stories in your chapter. He said, oh, I would love to do that. So he has some wonderful stories in that book uh, that he compiled on, on experiences he's had as a, an innkeeper. He also talked the executive chef into giving us some of their most marvelous recipes, including their famous mango ice cream. So I have that as well as many of the delightful and very, very fascinating stories that uh, he has told me. <coughs> and he knew I was going to come out here today, and he said, I just had to let you know that we had another experience. I said, when? He said, this week. One of our hotel guests in the newer wing of the hotel called and said they had had a terrible night the night before, constantly annoyed by a scraping of moving, moving uh, furniture uh, upstairs, right, in the room, <coughs> right above them. They uh, someone was moving furniture around, and they heard men, workmen up there, yelling at each other back and forth nearly all night long, they didn't get a bit of sleep. They had a terrible night. And when we went up there to check what in the world could that have been, that was a room that hadn't been rented in over a week. There was nobody there. Well, this is just something, folks, that they, they being the spirits, can do and often do. There's another new spirit at the Minger that's been seen quite a lot lately. And it's a little girl, a little wee little girl, about seven or eight years old, a uh, little blonde with curly hair, and she wears an old-fashioned dress. And she's taken a like, a very definite liking to the uh, young man who is the night room service waiter. And when he goes up to a room to deliver a sandwich or a cold drink or a piece of pie or some ice cream or something, to a patron, one of the hotel guests, he often has felt a tug on his trousers. He looks down and here's this little, uh, she's sort of transparent, but he can see right through her, but he can see her face and he can see her features, and this little girl is following him along. Now, the research that the hotel itself did, uh, they feel like that this is the spirit of a little girl, that there is some information that would lead them to believe it's a true story, uh, that this child was uh, playing in front of the hotel back in the 1890s and a runaway buggy, horse and buggy, ran her down and she was killed. She died. Uh, she was not a hotel guest. She was just a little local girl. But she has been seen by numerous people in the hotel.